Welcome to Wood Nicker Show, produced by Citify. On this platform, we sit down with those active in the community and educate the masses on information that they directly that directly affects them. I'm your host, Roscoe McGill. This installment is sponsored by Kelly Real Estate Group, providing services in every aspect of real estate to the city of Philadelphia and abroad. Please reach out to them at 267-639-1256. Again, their contact number is 267-639-1256. Now, today we have a prominent black male figure, uh, State Representative Amon Brown sitting down with us. Uh, for those who don't know who you are already, tell us about who Amon Brown is. Well, first and foremost, uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, Amon Brown is a uh, West Philadelphia, born and raised, uh, Grew up on 56 and Market, uh, you know, product of my environment, uh, overcome some hurdles uh, that, 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 that we typically would see in the urban communities. Uh, but growing up on 56th Street, it wasn't easy. You know, uh, there was a lot of decisions that we had to make. Uh, I, like to, I like to call it, you either decide to be a thoroughbred or a knucklehead at a very young age because of the hand, the hand that we were dealt. You know, it was either you, you, you took the pack or you shoveled snow and cleaned people's houses to make money. And I chose not to take the pack. Uh, I, I chose to hustle and grind it out. Um, you might remember shoveling snow. For sure. Every, every you know, for the sure. snowstorms were very lucrative for uh, for us growing up. Doubling up socks and all that. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, um, you know, life was hard. Yeah, you know, uh, not knowing how you were going to eat and not, not knowing if you were even gonna live to see the next day. Um, that's what life is like in our communities. And, and, uh, and I attended Hamilton Elementary School, went to Sarah Middle School and graduated Overbrook High School. Um, the whole time I was at Overbrook, I worked at uh, Sarah Beacon at the school program, and that's where I found my love for working with the youth. Uh, you know, the parents, I remember them telling me, uh, well, I remember them thinking that I wasn't from that community because I was kind of different. And then uh, over the years, they seen that, you know, I, I, I lived in that community all my life, and that I wanted to be a positive role model for young black men um, and, and young young women that look like me. Uh, you know, uh, being raised by a single mother, incarcerated father, uh, mother addicted to drugs. You know, we were always in survival mode, myself and my siblings. Uh, we depended on one school not for only the education but we depended on it working at the, with the Sarah Beacon program and being directly involved in the community and with the families that we provided services to which was at the school programs and summer camps and just community resources um, you know it that's where I found my love for the community and all the giving back and uh, and I can tell I can tell that there was something that uh it's kind of like your foundation mm -hmm. because now today even today when I go on social media um, I see you I see you active in the community mm -hmm. I see with our older population I see with the youth I see you getting your hands dirty mm -hmm. right and I think that has a that has a great impact and I want you to talk to us about um, why you think it's so important to be hands-on involved with the community but also why is it important for them to have that connection with you mm -hmm. so I want you to talk about that just tell us why is it so important to be hands-on and involved with the community you're always there yeah, so um, one thing that uh, I, I, I strive to be is accessible. Um, and I want my community to know uh, that, you know, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Right. And that I'm not just saying that I'm, um, I'm not just there to represent you in Harrisburg, mm -hmm. but I'm also here to help you in times of need. Um, and the things that I do in the community it came from the programs that supported me and my family and my siblings growing up. So it's like when I see a void, I do whatever it takes to fill that void. And you know, uh, when we're in a community feeding people, yeah. it's because 
you know, people in my community were, were in hard times a lot. And when we're able to fill refrigerators and put food on tables, it, it helps people. And it's not, it, and it's not like we're, we're putting junk food out there. We're putting fresh, um, healthy foods that's needed in our communities. Um, you know, and it's like the only thing that's available to us is corner stores and snacks and unhealthy things. So, you know, we try to provide a healthy option. Um, and then just all hands on deck with the community work that we do. I think you've been doing a you've been doing a great job uh, counteracting like those things that are in our community that are not serving us very well, right? Like you spoke on those corner stores that are not as healthy, right? Like you do a great job um, counteracting that. So, but I have a question for you. So, how is the community supporting you? Because your birthday just passed, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a big deal. Your birthday just came through. Thirty-four. Right? Thirty. It's the big three-four, right? Like you made that far. So yeah. tell us, like, what did you do for your birthday? How did you celebrate? Did you spend it with the community? Yeah, so uh, this year I spent time with my children mm. um, and some loved ones. Uh, last year, when I turned 33, the community did throw a surprise thing for me, um, which was which was unexpected. They had a cake and everything. Uh, but this year, it was kind of more, it was quiet. Mm. Yeah, I needed a, needed a little break. Right, right, right. You know, but I did receive all the outpouring love from the community on social media and several text messages and emails um, but making it to 34 you know it, it, it feels good where we come from you don't know if you won't make it 18 and that's a fact yeah I remember uh, when I turned 19 first thing I did was cry because man it's like you know what we've been through shit is hard um, excuse my language but uh, think about dudes that that ain't here. Excuse me. Think about Saeed. Right. I fuck that. You don't gotta apologize for that. That's a real thing. Um, you know, when, when I ride through a neighborhood, everybody gone. When Jason just died, yeah. that was a big loss for the community. Um, you know, they either dead or in jail. So when, so when every chance I get, I show up in my community to represent, and it feels good to represent the neighborhood I grew up in. And that's why, you know, I'm gonna do all I can to turn it around and to represent the people that look like us. Um, and that's a big deal. I mean, like, yeah. representation is key. Mm -hmm. Like, even even now, youth or anybody who's viewing, seeing you be vulnerable, yeah. like, those emotions matter. That's the next level. Yeah. Because in many underserved communities, like, to be vulnerable, to show emotions as a male, as a black male, mm -hmm. it's not always something that's promoted, but it's necessary, mm -hmm. right? Like. Because now anybody who's watching behind can say, like, this is okay. It's okay because mm -hmm. State Representative Brown did. Yeah. That's a big deal. That's yeah, a real man. big deal. You know, uh, us black men should cry more. You know, it's like we hold a lot of things in. I know I do. Um, it's not always a good thing. You know, when it comes out at times like this, you know, being this public figure, you always got to have a smile on your face. But when you're hurting inside, that's the reality. And, and taking on this role is so much on you. You know, when you're receiving phone calls about, you know, people not feeling safe in their homes and they've been trapped in their home for six months because there's violence outside. And what, do you, what, what am I going to do about it? You know, um, Getting phone calls from seniors telling you they telling you that they don't have food in their home, right. and then you deliver food. They don't even have a refrigerator. So how did you get? Because I mean that's a that's a lot of skills. It's a huge skill set to have to be able to come to the aid of so many people when they call, right? So 
What were you doing before you became uh, rep? I mean, Brown. Who were you before that? Entrepreneur, uh, uh, and community servant, and small small business owner. A um, few childcare facilities and real estate, but always stayed connected and gave back to the community. Whether it was, um, you know, making sure children had new sneakers and haircuts for school, backpacks, fully stuffed with um, the things that they need. Uh, and those were the things that I depended on growing up and the people in our community depended on. Um, you know, just so community serving, man. There's no other way to put it. Right. Um, so it seems like growing up in the 90s uh, helped you more or less serve people in a way that um, provides them the things that you needed, right? And so, I mean, like, that that's powerful because, like you said, there's two ways you can go. And it seemed like you went the way of, I know what I needed, so now I'm going to provide this. Mm -hmm. um, and we also know growing up in the 90s, it was rough for a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of single family homes, um, a lot of single mother homes. Can you tell us about your in-home life? Tell us about that part of your life and how was that? Yeah, man, um, so growing up on 56 and Market, uh, four, four younger sisters, two older brothers, and my mom. Uh, house barely had what we needed. You know, we depended more on what was outside the home than what was inside the home. You know, mother having drug addiction problems. Uh, you know, n not being present for weeks at a time, and we're we're left to fend for ourselves. Due to the drug addiction, uh, and and just you know, it was just a it was just a it was it was just a shelter, you know. Nothing else came out of that home. It just you know, it was it was a roof over our head. Um, leaks like crazy. Uh, rodents. No heat. Uh, no air conditioning in the summer. Um, you know, but I, I basically grew up outside um, and was, was only in the house when I needed to shower or use the restroom. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, the house is still standing and, you know, uh, I'm grateful for it. It was, it was our home. So it sounds like to me you've always been state representative out in Brown. Like the things you do now in that role, you've always been yeah. doing. It sounds like to me, like all those things Although that's what you went through, that's certainly not, that hasn't defined you. And I mean, that, that's something that like many people can gain from that. Um, from the high school you went to, to college, to what college did you attend? Uh, community college, Philadelphia. So then to even go that far, so then my next question for you would be, um, how is college important to our youth now in 2021? Um, college is very important, you know, uh, furthering your education. It, it, it can always only help you. Um, but even if you don't choose to go to, go to college, uh, you know, that doesn't make you not valuable or that doesn't mean your future isn't gonna be bright. Like I graduated high school, I did about a year and a half of community college and I thought, I thought that it was for me, but a college isn't for everybody. Um, you know, so I left college finished up the courses that I was taking, and I went ahead and opened my own business and became very successful. Uh, I employed a lot of people, um, and we took care of a lot of families. I had after school programs and summer camps, just like the programs that I worked in growing up. Um, and we had a, qu a quality pre-K program, uh, because I think that, you know, Early childhood education is one of the most important pieces of education. Well, one of the most important levels of education that human beings can experience. Um, you know, so we focus on quality. You know, but you know, colleges it was it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. But I tried it. I was trying to be the first graduate in my family of college. Uh, but you know, I went a different route. You, you were. I think. I think that it's safe to say that you were a bigger first, right? Like you are something now, 
You represent more than just your family. You represent this state. You represent black and brown people all across Pennsylvania, and it's a big deal, right? So it'll definitely shine light on that. Um, was there an individual um, when you were younger that, that kind of helped you, kind of shape, helped shape who you are? You know, was there a person who you could look at and say, this is who I want to be? Like, who inspired you to want to be Steph, um, State Representative Ahmed Brown? Well, my grandfather, he was the main male figure in my life. You know, he, he, he was the one who put my brother and I in the church, and he was the one who always popped up on us on the street corners telling us to go home or get off these corners. Um, you know, he was the one who taught me how to drive, mm. uh, and he taught me how to be a man, how to be a gentleman, and how to treat women. All right, so um, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, like your career before being state representative of Ivan Brown. Um, but to be 100% honest, right, um, I think you can also say to be state rep is n to be in the politics in general. It's not a traditional career path for youth coming out of West Philadelphia or youth coming out of Philadelphia in general. So, um, what exactly got you on that track? So, you know, uh, West Philly politics are, are a little different um, from other parts of the city and other parts of the state. But, you know, the position became available. Um, it, w it became an open seat. And, you know, we, we needed some authentic representation. We mean, meaning um, young people and families that are impacted the most by poverty and um, poor education systems and the whole nine. You know, so, when the seat became when the seat became open, I said, you know what, I'm, maybe I'll run for state rep. Yeah, for you sure. know, uh, you know, and then I looked at the map, and I'm like, hold on now. This is my whole hood, right? You know, all the schools that I went to. Um, you know, all the families that I've been there for and that have been there for me throughout the years. All the people that I grew up with. And I'm like, you know what, let me go ahead and get these petitions in uh, for those who don't know to get on a ballot you need 300 ballot signatures um, and they must be all registered voters in that district so we went ahead and did about i believe around 16 1800 we, we always go above and beyond you submit those um, and then there's a challenging period for anybody else running for the seat can challenge or not and then once you get through that, um, then you just start hitting the pavement. Mm. Um, and you start getting in front of people, whether it's door knocking or social media, uh, to let people know who you are mm. and, and why you're running. You know, and it was a... So while, you're going, while, while that was happening, can you share with us, like, how did you feel through that? Like, so from the beginning all the way to the end, how did you feel? How did it feel when you actually, when they said you need 300, uh, Ballots. Is that what you said? 300 signatures. 300 signatures in order for you to be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Was that like a? Did that seem like a daunting task, or was, did it feel like something that was achievable? When you got midway through, how did you feel? Walk us through that step by step. How did you feel? No, it felt it felt achievable. Um, I had a great team with me, um, and I, I personally did 300 myself. So I went to a lot of people who who knew who who I who I am, um, and they signed it with no problem. And it was an easy decision for them to make because they know me. They know I'm from the community and they know where my heart is. So we got we got the 1800, um, and we didn't get challenged. And then it was it was just a rumble from there. You know, you go through a lot of ups and downs, and you, you take a lot of blows. Can you be, tell us about uh, maybe one or two ups and downs? What do you mean by a rumble? Uh, you know, you're you're campaigning. You know, so. You might have some candidate forums, and you're asked tough questions, and you're asked questions like you're already the state rep, and you're not, you know. So it's like, you know, we chose to just be transparent, and we chose for me to be be myself. How did it make you feel when they asked you questions um, as if you were a state rep, but you were not yet? How did it make you feel? You know, in that moment, you feel like 
uh, oh, I'm about to mess up, or I'm about to lose some possible votes, or those votes are about to go to somebody else, but, you know, uh, you know, people respect transparency, um, and they respect humbleness, and people, people feel, feel your energy, and they know when you're authentic. I'm glad you said that. Because um, you were very transparent and very authentic when you spoke about college, right? And you, you, you spoke about um, your stint in college. And I, I want to go back to that and shine some light on that because I think there was um, some jewels that were very, very valuable in there. Um, because did you finish? Uh, did you finish college? No, I did not. So I mean, I'll, I'll leave that to you to tell us more about that because I, I want you, I want to pull out some things that you said. For example, um, in the city, we know there's tons of charters in Philadelphia, right? Mm -hmm. And it's push that our kids should go to college almost to the extent where they feel like it's either college or fail um, how do you feel about that yeah I don't I don't think it's college or fail um, and what I what I what I failed to mention was I did attend Bach vocational school for two years um, my ninth and tenth grade year of high school but I went there because they had trade programs and I wanted to be a carpenter and I wanted to get into the construction business. And in 10th grade, they, they pulled all, the, all of the trades in almost every high school in Philadelphia. You know, so that's one thing that I'm fighting for in Harrisburg is uh, more funding for tech programs and uh, trade programs because you do have some people out there who, who, who college ain't for them. You know, they might want to be an electrician, a plumber, they want to, you know, be a carpenter. People might want to be developers, architects. You know, we need those. We need those people um, in order for our economy to work. Um, I think the most, the, the clearest example of that was our year that just passed, mm -hmm. right? Like those people were the ones still active mm -hmm. when a, a lot of our uh, white collar workers were not, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, so a lot of our frontline people, a lot of our people who hold vocational certificates were the ones, for lack of a better word, holding our country down. Mm -hmm. So I think that what you said, uh, we had a clear example of that already. So I 100% I agree. Um, so the next thing I want to you know, put in your direction is like, usually when you're a prominent man of color um, and you set out to make change in any community similar to what you're doing, there is like a lot of challenges, right? Um, at least from my perspective, I anticipate challenges and I think that others do. So I want you to, uh, can you share with us some hurdles? And I know that you talked about, talked about them, uh, Zayden, but I want you just to kind of dive a little deeper. Um, share with us some hurdles, some experiences that you may have run into while you were actually running uh, to be state rep. Yeah, so, um, you know, politics is a dirty game and some hurdles that we face was, you know, people try to bring up your past. Can we say dirty game? Can you say dirty game? All right, go ahead. Yeah, politics is a dirty game. And what people try to do is they bring up, they try to bring up your past thinking that it will hurt you um, or they think that it would make you lose the election or lose votes um, or, or damage your name. And so, you know, I had a rough upbringing. I've been incarcerated before. Uh, I, I understand what it feels like to be in CFCF on State Road. I understand what it feels like to be in a police district for three days. Um, I experienced my share of handcuffs. You know, uh, uh, you know, so people, they try to use some of that stuff against you. But what they fail to realize is that the climate is changing and people, people want something different. They want to elect people that, that are relatable and I understand my community. And that's why you know, I ran, because we needed some representation um, and someone who is well-rounded and experienced and understand what we're going through. I agree. Um... I 100% agree. I think anybody who's watching agrees representation is key. Be a little more specific for us. What do you mean by hurdles? Hurdles, um, you know, like when I, when I got tangled up in a situation and while I was sitting 
in a, in a county cell, you know, I thought my life was over. Um, and being told, you know, growing up, I want you to go to, want you go to jail or prison, you're done. Uh, you know, that's all I could think about was that my life was over. And uh, once every, I made it through that situation, I did not let that obstacle define what my future was going to be like. You know, I refused to let that situation um, control my life. You know, and I just kept fighting. And I just wanted more from myself and my community. And just to be clear for anybody who's viewing, um, you can end up in the county jail just from being in a holding cell and the bus is about to leave. There's nothing necessarily that needs to be happening for you to go that far. So, and that's a situation that can be demoralizing to many people. So for you to come out of that um, and to be where you are is a huge deal. Um, assuming that you are going to run again, uh, for re-election, how do you plan to build on the work that you've already done for uh, this community, for this state, for our people? Yeah, so uh, I will be running again. And I just think that making sure black and brown people across the whole Commonwealth have access to, what's, uh, to, to what we're supposed to have access to, whether it's state-funded programs and resources. Uh, I just want to continue to make sure that my community and community similar have access um, and educate people on what's out there. You know, because uh, I see a lot of, a, a lot of what we go through is because we're, we're uneducated on what's available to us. You know, uh, I can't, I can't remember how many times my mom even visited a state rep office. Uh, I didn't really find out what a state rep was or did until I was a grown man. That's a problem, indeed. You know, and, and in this in this role, it's very it's a very important role. Why is it important? You know, because of what we're responsible for as a state representative um, for 65,000 plus residents. Can you name a few things that you are solely responsible for as state rep? You know, we're, we, we are the direct access to um, SNAP program benefits, um, you know, rent rebate property tax rebate, um, birth certificate help, you lose your birth certificate, um, you know, just whatever you need to make sure you can uh, uh, get your affairs in order or better your life, we are responsible for, you know, so your, your, your basic state necessities. That's so all the things that have a direct impact on the people. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, without without the things that we're responsible for, you probably couldn't get other other things done, or you wouldn't even qualify. And you probably couldn't do any of those things without the support from the community, especially community leaders, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that so actually that's a great segue. So tell us more about tell us about the house bill, that house bill fifteen eighty seven, mm -hmm. that our community a lot of people were like supporting you in. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So. Uh, House Bill 1587, uh, it, it comes from understanding what's going on in urban communities across the country right now. Uh, you know, being raised on 56 and Market and having acquaintances and knowing people who are still in, um, still living this lifestyle of violent crime, uh, you know, understanding what they go through, understanding their mindset, uh, understanding that some people just don't want a program, some people just don't want to work. They want this lifestyle of being a violent criminal because it's cool or uh, 
it's cool to be a shooter because my friends do it, you know. And when I was growing up, you know, there was a sort of respect in the street for certain things, mainly women, children, seniors, and the working man. They were respected. Um, we always had violent criminals in our communities, but there were times when you didn't do things if that was your lifestyle. Nowadays, these, this new generation of violent criminal, there's no respect for community. There's no respect for innocent bystanders. Uh, I can't even count, I can't even remember a time when a woman or a child died when I was growing up. But nowadays, it's multiple a week. You know, and being from the urban community and living it and still being in touch with the community, some of these people that's, that's committing these violent crimes, they need to be held accountable. They know exactly what they're doing. They know that there's a chance that they'll get away with something because of what's currently in place or not in place. So HB 1587 came from understanding the entire picture of what goes on in these communities impacted by gun violence. I think that your words um, are so powerful because you come from the place, the very place that you're representing right now. I think that that is probably the biggest jewel of them all because the very bill that you're putting in place is to protect the neighborhood that you've grown up in the city that you've grown up in, the place that has helped mold you. And I think that people who've come before you, who have probably done great things, or aspired to do great things, it's very hard to do that when you, when you are removed from an area. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that you are not, I think the fact that you are involved heavily, um, which is why the people support you so much um, with HB 1587. So I think that's, that, that to me, speaks volumes, right? And I think that, um, I think that you should continue doing the things that you think will um, help move the city forward. I think that the youth that see you doing this um, should be inspired by what you're doing, for sure. If you could say anything to our community, to the city, to the kids, um, what would it be? I'll never give up. You know, you do have a bright future. Um, and people do love you, people do care. And, you know, and to the city, you know, this is, we, we have so much potential in this city, man. Um, but we have to work together to move our city forward. You know, um, we have to be willing to think outside the box. We have to be willing to try something different. We have to be willing to listen to the people that we represent. Um, this is coming from a man who's literally done the things that you're saying, right? Like you've done them. You've been an entrepreneur. You've become the state representative. You've done plenty of things that are outside the norm. Literally doing the things you say. For example, what do you have planned today? What are you doing today? Yeah, so tonight uh, we're having the first open to the public town hall, public safety town hall. Um, and it's, it's more of a conversation with the community as opposed to elected officials or community leaders standing in front of people telling them what's good for them. It's a open, a open discussion involving the community and the people that are trapped in our homes and can't sit on a porch because at any given time of day, a bullet can fly past you. Or, or uh, you know, it's it's just a transparent discussion. We're going to have some high-ranking law enforcement officials there. Um, I'm sure some elected officials will be there. 
but it's time that we listen to the community and hear what they want, hear what they're experiencing, not by, not just going by what someone told you, or um, not by going by what you personally believe. You know, um, as an elected official, I work for the people that sent me there, and that's what I wake up and do every single day. You know. Um, I know there's a lot being said in reference to some of the decisions that I make, but these ain't stuff I'm just coming up with. This is my community speaking to me and me acting on what they're telling me. And I think that you holding this forum for um, the community to uh, be heard um, will we'll speak to what you just said, like that it's not just your voice. You're not speaking for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you are literally speaking with us, staying with us, working with us. Mm -hmm. I think that that makes people feel empowered, um, but I also think that people who are not involved, people who don't understand, may be nervous by the way that you're moving. Mm -hmm. I think that the people in the community are um, happy with the way you're moving. I think that they need to know what you're doing, they need to see what you're doing, so they can feel the impact. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what this is all about. So. What do you see for your future as you continue to journey on? Hey man, my, uh, my future is determined by the people that I represent. It's where, wherever they want me to go. You know, um, you know, as long as I continue to do my job and I please my community and my constituents, uh, whether, whether they're in, directly in my district or not, O only the only the constituents know, mm. you know, and um, you know, and only God knows what's in store for uh, my future. Um, you know, so one 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 day at a time. One day at a time. You know, uh, and one solid problem at a time, I guess. Yeah, so. All right, folks. Um, there you have it. There's Wood Nichols uh, with State Representative Amin Brown. If you believe nothing else, believe that I am you and the things that he's done, you can do it too. And that's all we got, folks.